Time is 6.30 on this thankful Thursday. You are taking a live look over the city of downtown Macon. I'm TJ Anthony. And I'm Ashlyn Webb. And it sounds like we have some beautiful weather in store this week. Alex, what are we looking at? Yeah, TJ and Ashlyn, we are talking about temperatures much cooler this morning than they were yesterday morning, but also clear skies for at least the next three days or so. So that's a welcome sight here in central Georgia. 40 waking up in Macon, 39 in Warner Robins, 41 over in Dublin, 37 in Butler, 38 in Montezuma. We've got 40 down in McRae, 31 minutes after 6 this morning. But as I alluded to, some 15 to 20 degrees colder, even 21 degrees colder now in Unadilla and in Cordial. And all these numbers could continue to climb here until we get to a uh, sunrise just about an hour from now. Nothing out there on the radar picture compared to yesterday. This is a welcome sight and across the southeast. There's not a whole lot going on. Just some sprinkles to the north and certainly some much colder air off to the northwest. Today look for our temperatures to be in the 40s by about 9 a.m. and then 50s by about the 1 p.m. hour. A high temperature right around 52, but our average high is 60, not coming too close to that. Mostly sunny skies again. Sunrise just about an hour away at 733, but sun so sunshine to finish the week. But a cool finish to the week. We'll take a look at all the details, including our next rain chance, which is on Sunday, an hour by hour look at future views just a few moments away. Thanks, Alex. A Macon woman says she was working alone at a subway when she was held at gunpoint and robbed. She says she was traumatized and then fired. Give me a job, put me somewhere else in a, in a safe area or within the company where you got people that, that respect people's safety and everything and, and allow me to work with somebody else rather than just throwing me away like a wolf when I was the one that was um, victimized and I was the one that had to go through the situation. Two days after the robbery, Samuel Hunter asked the manager if she could have someone work with her during her 4 p.m. to uh, closing shift. Hunter had someone uh, who was supposed to come and help, but they never showed up. Hunter learned she had been fired when she called to check on her schedule. We have reached out to Subway's corporate office for a comment. They have not responded, and the Bibb County Sheriff's Office say the case is still under investigation. Macon County investigators say they've captured inmate Miracle Davis after he escaped from jail. Montezuma Police Department posted on Facebook yesterday saying they, along with Macon County Sheriff's Office and Oglethorpe Police Department, were looking for Davis. No word on how he escaped or what charges he faced. By 1030 last night, the police department said they found Davis on Carla Drive in Oglethorpe and took him into custody. That's about a mile from the Sheriff's Office. We've learned more details on the car chase and deadly crash we told you about just yesterday. Bibb Sheriff's Office say 26-year-old Rashad Jones of Forsyth refused to pull over during a traffic stop and lost control of his car on Log Cabin Drive during a chase. It happened around 2.30 just yesterday. Police tried to pull him over for making a right turn on a red light at Columbus Road and Mercer University Drive. Georgia State Patrol says Jones' car hit an unoccupied car and went airborne, then overturned and hit a tree. A man is now charged for shooting and killing a man at a fast food restaurant. 21 year old Alonzo Hicks appeared before a judge yesterday. He's charged with felony murder and possession of a firearm during the crime. Another felony. A Bibb County arrest warrant says Hicks pointed a nine millimeter handgun at Robert Wells, who was sitting in his work truck at Miss Winters on Pionona Avenue during Tuesday's lunch hour. Wells was shot in the chest. Brittany Brantley and Jamie Williams work at a pawn shop just across the street from the restaurant. I almost cried because okay. well, you're going the wrong just way. you don't never know your your time, you know. And he was just going to get lunch. He didn't think he was going to die today. I feel sorry for the family. He didn't just hurt that man. He took away somebody they love, and in his family, because now he's fixing to go away for something that he did, but he knew better. Hicks is ordered to stay away from family members of the victim. No court date is set yet. He's now held without bond at the Bibb County Jail. The Macon Water Authority is celebrating a step forward in fixing storm drainage issues in South Bibb County. They released blueprints for an updated drainage system in sub South Bibb County, but they need help from homeowners. The Water Authority says they've dealt with flooding in South Bibb for years. Yesterday, they released a plan to fix part of the issue in Nowell Estates near Francis Drive and Liberty Road. They plan to improve the current drainage and ditches and build new ones, leading to two retention ponds. Archie Welch has lived there since 1996. The new ponds will be right behind his house. I think the drainage ponds that they plan on building, I think will work sufficient if we can get the water to the pond from our area. That's, that's my, my concern, is how they're gonna get the water to the, to the drainage pond. There still needs to be approval from the Army Corps of Engineers. They've been involved because of nearby wetlands. 
Also in South Bibb, a beautification project is about to get underway. The demolition starts at 10 a.m. today. Crews will demolish a house and surrounding buildings on Cliffview Drive to help improve Cliffview Lake Park. That's off of Houston Road in South Megan. Mayor Lester Miller and Parks and Beautification Director Mike Glisson will mark the start of the demo project. Great news for people in the state looking for pain relief for some other medical issues. You may soon have access to medical marijuana products. The Georgia Access to Medical Cannabis Commission just gave the final approval on licenses for two companies to manufacture and distribute low THC oil. Wednesday, the commission also signed off on rules to regulate their organizations and how patients can get their medicine. Now, the governor would still have to okay these regulations. There's no timeline right now on when that would happen. The time is 636. Heads up for Georgians impacted by the recent storm that used SNAP benefits. The Department of Human Services says you can request replacement benefits if you lost food bought with your SNAP benefits because of the power outages on January 12th. Here's what you need to do. Just fill out the food loss replacement form on the department's website, then either deliver it in person to your local office or email it to snapreplacement at dhs.ga.gov. You must submit the form by February 1st to get the replacement benefits. Governor Brian Kemp laid out his budget and job creation plan during his State of the State address. Yesterday, he introduced the Rural Workforce Housing Fund as one solution for communities that want to attract talent but struggle to provide housing. Governor Kemp also celebrated the creation of job opportunities benefiting teachers, public safety, and other industries. This past year in particular was unprecedented for economic success in the Peach State. In less than 365 days, we announced four of the largest economic development projects in the history of our state. Those four projects alone will bring over 20,000 new jobs and over $17 billion in investment to rural communities across Georgia. Governor Kemp credited partnerships around the state with local communities and the Chamber of Commerce for helping Georgia grow its investments and education and jobs. The Bibb County School District will celebrate 150 years today. They'll celebrate with an academic showcase at Ballard Hudson Middle School. The event kicks off at 5 p.m. today. The school says the event will have prizes and refreshments, of course. The time is 6.38. Today, the Boys and Girls Club of Central Georgia will host the annual gala and Youth of the Year event. The event will feature and spotlight five finalists competing for the title of 2022-2023 Central Georgia Youth of the Year. The finalists are club members representing locations in Bibb, Monroe, and Candler counties. This gala and event will be today at 6.30 at Middle Georgia State University. The keynote speaker is NFL Hall of Famer Terrell Davis. They say tickets and sponsorship information can be found at bgccg.org. Tickets to the event are $50 and proceeds go towards a $1,000 scholarship for the winner and continued support of the Boys and Girls Club of Central Georgia. And today you'll see film crew setting up in downtown making for a Disney Plus show about Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Now parking on Poplar Street will be reduced just for a half a block from 2nd Street to the crosswalk. There's a handful of other closures that will affect drivers and people going into the courthouse through next Wednesday, February 1st. You can check our website 13WMAZ.com for the full list. After the break, we'll tell you about the movie Missing. You'll hear from Georgia-born actress Storm Reed, who's been in a blockbuster hit like 12 Years a Slave and the HBO hit Euphoria. Plus, the launch of a new app helping Macon visitors take a tour of the city's music history. We break down how you can also learn facts and see biography, biographies of famous musicians and events in the area. Your time now at 639 and Alex, a beautiful day in store. Thankfully, that rain is behind us, at least for today. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It will be back for the weekend, though. So if you have outdoor plans this weekend, it does look like Saturday, the much better day as opposed to Sunday here in the Peach State. But yes, we have had a very wet month and we are going to add to that as we roll into the weekend. There's a school bus rolling its way, picking up kids in Lawrence County this morning, looking live over downtown Dublin. Temperature of 41 right now, winds out of the west-northwest at about six miles an hour. We've got 
39 in Warner Robins, 39 in Byron, Fort Valley, 38 in Crawford County, 36 in Forsyth, 41 in Irwin, 10, 39 in Cochran, and down to the south, some more 30s, 38 in uh, Cordial, Americas, 39 down in Rochelle, and 43 in Vidalia. Now, Compared to yesterday, this looks real pretty good, right? We have nothing out there on the radar picture. Picked up over an inch and a quarter of rain at Middle Georgia Regional Airport, all thanks to that cold front, which is moving off the coast this morning. Here comes the secondary cold front from the northwest. That's not going to have too much of an impact on our weather as we are already cold here in central Georgia this Thursday morning. So warming through the morning hours up to about 48 by the noon hour or so, only getting to about 52 later on this afternoon. So a cool day across the area, plenty of sunshine to go around, some high level clouds will be possible through the day. We're calling it mostly sunny and partly cloudy somewhere in there. And then for tomorrow morning, I know you're seeing mid to low 30s on the board here, but I'm thinking we mix in a few 20s tomorrow morning and the same for Saturday morning as well. So warming up to about 52 tomorrow afternoon. But then again, I know we're looking at mid to low 30s on the board here, but I do think we're going to mix in some 20s. Well, this is how that goes on future view. Whenever you get the clear skies, you always got to take a few degrees off the temperatures of what it's saying. Waking or going to bed Saturday night, though, later in the night, we will be looking at the clouds building in this all ahead of some showers by the time we get to Sunday. So there's the overcast skies Saturday afternoon. Here's the rainfall on Sunday. Talking about timing of this, I'm thinking Sunday morning is okay. So if you're going to church Sunday morning, I don't think you're going to need the rain jacket and umbrella unless you're going at 11 and coming back at like one or two. Then I think you'll need it because I think the rain chance is going to be beginning during the afternoon hours and then lasting through the evening and overnight on into Monday morning. The good news is for Monday afternoon, we'll begin to clear out. But as things stand now, I'm thinking the Monday morning commute is going to be a soggy one. And then with Tuesday, mostly dry, a slight chance of a shower, especially to the north. Once we get to Wednesday, that's really when the rain chances begin to build back in and it has been a very wet month. There is no secret about it so far this month picked up 7.1 inches of rain. Normally we see 3.3, so we are more than double of what a normal January entails and we're going to add to that again on Sunday and then again probably on Tuesday. So man, what a wet stretch here in central Georgia over the next few days. 52 for today and tomorrow 56 for Saturday back to 60 by the time we get to Monday calling it mostly sunny today. The average high is 60, so the next few days below that winds out of the west northwest 10 to 15 sunrise is at 733 this morning. Here comes the seven day forecast. As I alluded to, I'm expecting 20s tomorrow morning and Saturday morning on uh, the, during the morning hours. I should say partly cloudy skies. Then here comes that 70% chance of rain beginning on Sunday. A brief break on Tuesday back to 40% for Wednesday.